please welcome the very talented Sir Shawonan. <laughs> Go with that. I'm very well. Okay, come and sit down. Hey, it's great to have you on the show. I'm so excited you're on the show. I'm such a fan oh, of yours. Oh, thanks for having me. I was looking at this backstage and yeah. it really does look like a hot dog. Giant hot dog? Yeah. And, well, it's kind of appropriate because if this was made of sausage, I would eat the whole thing in one sitting. Yeah. I wouldn't have a problem. You're sure. <laughs> Hey, uh, so many movies in such a short period of time, and you got nominated for an Oscar when you were 13? Yeah. That yeah. must have, what a feeling that must have been. How did the, that must have been an incredible period in your life. It was. I mean, it, it's funny looking back on it now because, in a way, it, it was just a bit of a blur, that whole experience, that event and everything. Um, but I think just what I remember from the actual event was just being really hungry because, it, <laughs> you know, you're on the red carpet for about two hours before you go inside. Yeah. And then you're in there for another two and a half hours. And then by the time you get out, you know, you get a little tiny plate of food like at the little... governor's ball, just a little bit, just yeah. a little bit. Um, so I was lepping. I was that's Irish for starving. I was really, really hungry. What's by the, the word end. for starving? Lepin. I was lepping. Yeah, I was lepping. What does that mean? I mean, it I don't means, mean starving, but it means you're famished. Where does it come from, lepping? I don't know. It's just a we word. have a we have a funny language at home. <laughs> but you still live in Ireland. You could live over here. You could live in Hollywood. I guess most of your work must be presumably in other countries. Yeah. Uh, and yet you live in Ireland. Family. This is you, you. You just want to stay there. You just like it that, that much. I, I mean, I love Ireland. I would like to live in other places as well. I mean, I love London and I love New York as well. I was born in New York, so whenever I go back there, you know, I I feel yeah. very much at home. So how old were you when your family moved back to Ireland? I was about three and a half. One thing that struck me where you're talking here, and I was listening to what you were saying, but at the same time it struck me that you've got a much stronger Irish accent than I thought you would have. Oh, yeah. And yet in movies that never comes through unless it's needed. So you must be pretty good at... You, you've mastered the art of, of hiding that or changing that. Are there accents you can't do or are there accents which come easier to you? I'd quite like to be able to do your voice. Cos I just... I love the way you speak. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> but I've never done Steve, it. Steve, can you do my voice? Uh, well, I, 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 I try to do it, you know, and I, 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 I certainly <laughs> try to do it. But of course, it's, it's rather easy, really, isn't it? Because, of course, you've got the, uh, the, uh, the speech impediment that's sort of actually part of what, what, what makes you who you are, really. <laughs> that doesn't sound anything like me. <laughs> I haven't been practising, well. Jonathan, because I'm not that bothered about trying to do your voice. <laughs> 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 OK, so your new movie, uh, Saoirse's new movie is called Byzantium. Uh, it's not out until the end of May, May the 31st thing comes out, and it's a, it's a very different take on the kind of vampire story, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's almost like a more classical vampire story, I think. Like, it's more, it's more of a mythical kind of folklore take on it. Um, but, we, you know, we don't have fangs, we're able to walk out into the sunlight, we don't turn into crystal... Or bats. Things. We don't turn into bats. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's basically about um, these two women and they've, they've been turned into succreants, we call them. We don't actually refer to ourselves as vampires, just to make sure that we have that little yeah. bit of separation there. Um, and, yeah, and they're mother and daughter. And so it's just really about their relationship and how they've basically kind of um, floated through every single year for the last 200 years. It's got you in it and the, the mother, and this is the key relationship is played by the very beautiful Gemma Arterton, of course. Yeah. And I guess the point is, even though you're about the same age, the vampires don't age, or succreants don't age in the same way, so that is an issue. Uh, let me show you a clip. This is Byzantium, as I said, it's out May the 31st. That's <laughs> Byzantium, so it's a, it's a very different... It's, a, you know, it's, not, it's not a horror film. I wouldn't call it a horror film, would you? No, I don't think so. It's a bit bloody. Yeah. And your character, she doesn't uh, attack people sort of like who are unwilling, does she? There's a kind of a twist there about how she chooses the people she feeds off of. Yeah, well, she's a nice killer. She's a, she's a nice vampire. <laughs> well, basically, what she does is, in order to live with what she has to do so often, is she, um, she'll kill people who are ready to die. Um, so she kills a lot of old people. And she'll <laughs> she's, kind of like, she's like a vampire version of Dignitas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me ask you about the next movie you're about to make. Uh, I'm very envious of who you're working with on this because you're going to, have to work with Ryan Gosling. Uh, I know, ladies, I know. They all say. Uh, yeah, and he is just about a one of the best screen actors going at the moment. But also, this is a movie that he's writing and directing. Yeah, he's not actually in it; he's just directing it. Okay. So. And you've met him before? You know him from the past? Yeah. Well, he was actually supposed to play the dad in Lovely Bones That's right. at one stage. Now, so, I, I heard why they fell out over that, and it seems... Well, do you know why he we'll didn't... talk about it on You're not allowed to talk about it? 
Well, what did you hear? I heard this. I heard this was uh, Peter Jackson had cast Ryan Gosling to play uh, your character's father in The Lovely Bones, a part that was later played by Mark Wahlberg. And uh, I heard that Ryan Gosling had his very own take as to what the character should be, and he went away and he put on a lot of weight. And he started changing, he changed his hair and he looked kind of very different. He didn't look like Ryan Gosling. He looked like the Ryan Gosling that you see in Lars on the Real Girl, plus about another 30 pounds. Right. I think. And he came back to work and they went, we wanted Ryan. That's what we signed up for. We wanted pecs and abs, Ryan. <laughs> uh, and, and that's why they parted company, that's what I heard. OK. <laughs> so, so what did that's you hear? That's interesting you hear? what you heard. I won't, I mean, you know, it's all done now, but basically, you know, they ha I think they, they all had a different idea of who they wanted Jack Salmon to be. And Ryan had one idea of what he wanted, and I respect that, to be honest, because I think seeing him especially now and what he's done since then, he's a brilliant actor. And um, I really think, just from talking to him and just from seeing him on screen, you can tell he takes it very seriously, and he's not really a kind of self-aware actor like a lot of men tend to be, I think. What do you um, mean by that, when you say self-aware? I mean, I mean, sometimes you see men on screen and they're, they're aware of how they look, you know? So, and, and he, but he must be aware of how he looks. He must know the impact. I don't know he... if he is. I mean, when I watch him on screen, what I enjoy most about his performance is that he doesn't... Uh, he doesn't seem to care about any of that stuff. Yeah, he doesn't. You're right. He just changes his appearance. So. Hey, just before you go, and I know you're going to warm up. We, I want you to stretch. I, I want you to get warmed up. So I don't want you to pull anything because you're going to waste. Will I am? Who looks actually? To be honest with you, you he look like you're taking intense. this quite seriously, Will. I'm, 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 I'm doing my meditation now, trying oh, to take, get all my muscles aligned okay. so I could um, just whip, 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 whip that butt in the race. <laughs> Will, <laughs> you, ha you haven't said dope once in this interview. Oh, I heard one I was, dope. One, dope did, one dope? dope did come out earlier. I think he described me as being I said, dope. Yeah, he's, he's dope. Yes. A and dope. I, I, it is. I, 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 a dope, yeah. I was very happy to be described as dope. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Francesca, has Will called you dope yet this evening? No, he hasn't. But on a different note, I want to see your abs. <laughs> I think... <laughs> yes, he was. I, I think any kind of a gentleman would oblige that kind of request, Will. Come on, Will. Um, <laughs> my abs kind of look like um, if you peel open uh, a Hershey's chocolate, you see the little squares. Yeah, yeah. That's what it looks like. Mine's similar. Mine's like if you peel open a bounty bar and you just get one nice big. <laughs> <thing. laughs> okay, uh, Sasha, it's been lovely to have you on the show. I'm very excited about the race. Thanks, Jonathan. It's coming up. I'm going gonna, gonna to win for you. <laughs> <laughs> OK. I'll try. So we're going to be racing a little bit later on. But uh, after the break, I will be chatting to Steve Coogan. Of course, Francesca Martinez is coming up as well. But for now, will you join me in saying thank you to the lovely Sasha Wonen, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> that was fabulous. Thank you. And good luck. <laughs>